Over the years, both JetBlue and Southwest have amassed a huge number of loyal customers, thanks to their lower prices and unique approaches to status programs. In 2022, in fact, Southwest was named the best airline in the country for economy flights, with JetBlue getting top marks for premium business and first-class travel. But which of the two airlines is right for your specific needs? I've put together this video to answer that exact question. Here's everything you need to know. If this video is helpful to you, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support my work and I would appreciate that support. Let's start with the basics of these airlines. Southwest Airlines operates from nine hubs, though it doesn't necessarily call them hubs. Its large cities include Atlanta, Baltimore, Washington, Chicago, Denver, Houston, Nashville, Oakland, Phoenix, and St. Louis. JetBlue, on the other hand, also doesn't have specific hubs. Its largest airport is New York JFK. However, it also has a large presence in Boston, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Washington Dulles, and Long Beach. Both airlines have a slightly weird city presence, but they both generally have good coverage around the country. That said, Southwest definitely operates more flights, with 4,000 daily compared to JetBlue's 1,000. Neither Southwest nor JetBlue are part of major airline alliances. However, unlike Southwest, JetBlue does have a few partner airlines, allowing you to earn points on JetBlue even when you're flying on those other airlines. JetBlue's partnerships can be a little complicated. However, know that you can earn JetBlue points on American Airlines, Iceland Air, Qatar, and more and you can earn or redeem points on Hawaiian Airlines. According to NerdWallet, both JetBlue and Southwest offer the same points value, 1.5 cents when redeemed on rewards travel. That's not bad, though not as impressive as on some other airlines. A major difference between JetBlue and Southwest, of course, is how they approach seating. Southwest offers open seating, so it's first come first served, and there's no higher class fares. JetBlue, on the other hand, does have the equivalent of business class seats, which can be booked or upgraded to depending on the status tier of the flyer. Earning points on both airlines is relatively easy. The easiest way to earn points, of course, is by flying on the airline. However, you can also earn points by booking hotels through the airline and, of course, getting branded credit cards. Credit cards are a great way to earn points in your day-to-day -day life and are worth checking out if you really want to ascend to higher status tiers. You can also transfer points from other rewards programs, including Chase Ultimate Rewards and City Thank You. Points on JetBlue are called True Blue Points. However, to achieve status, you'll have to earn tiles. Tiles are earned based on spend on the airline, and you'll get a tile for every $100 that you spend on JetBlue. On Southwest, you'll earn rapid rewards points, which are also earned based on spend. On Southwest, you'll get between 6 and 12 points per $1 on the base tier, or up to 24 points per dollar if you have a higher status and spend on higher class tickets. I'll go through the range of money that you have to spend for each tier as we go. The first status tier on JetBlue is called Mosaic 1, while on Southwest, it's Rapid Rewards A-List. On JetBlue, you'll have to earn 50 tiles or spend $5,000, while on Southwest, you'll have to earn 35,000 points or spend $2,000. 916 for only business select fares, 5,833 for only want to get away fares, or somewhere in between for other fares. On Southwest, you'll also reach A-list after 20 qualifying flights. Southwest's A-list tier offers benefits tailored to the airline's unique open plan seating model. As a member of A-list, travelers can enjoy priority boarding, which, given Southwest's seating arrangement, can be crucial for those wishing to secure preferred seats such as exit rows. Additionally, members get a 25% earning bonus, express and priority lanes for both check-in and boarding, and the flexibility of same-day change and standby options without incurring additional fees for flights with the same base fare. Mosaic 1 members, on the other hand, will get some additional perks. Members are entitled to a suite of benefits, including priority boarding, two complimentary check bags, and complimentary in-flight alcohol. A standout feature for Mosaic 1 members is the access to even more space, JetBlue's version of an enhanced economy seating. However, these seats are only awarded at check-in and are often occupied by passengers who have pre-booked them or by those with higher tiers of status, limiting their availability at check-in on Mosaic 1. Generally, Mosaic 1 offers more perks than Southwest A-List, especially given the possibility of upgraded seating, something you can't get on Southwest. The second status tier is called Mosaic 2 on JetBlue and A-List Preferred on Southwest. A-List Preferred is the second of only two status tiers on Southwest, so this is about as good as it gets for frequent flyers on the airline. On JetBlue, you'll reach Mosaic 2 after earning 100 tiles or spending $10,000. On Southwest, you'll get to A-List Preferred after spending around $10,500 for only base fares, $5,250 for business select fares, or somewhere in between for a combination of fares. The perks are better on these tiers, thankfully. On A-List Preferred, you'll get same-day flight changes, additional priority in boarding, and a 100% earning bonus, allowing you to earn at a much faster rate. You'll also get free in-flight internet. 
the perks on JetBlue are a little more substantial. You'll get the same perks as Mosaic One, plus better access to even more space seating, which you'll be upgraded to during booking, pending availability, instead of at check-in. That's where Southwest perks end, but it's not where JetBlue's perks end. There are two more status tiers on JetBlue, called Mosaic 3 and 4. You'll reach Mosaic 3 after earning 150 tiles, which is equivalent to spending $15,000 on JetBlue travel. Mosaic 3 offers the same benefits as Mosaic 1 and 2, including priority boarding, free bags, alcohol, same-day flight switches, and more. On top of that, you'll get free upgrades to even more space seats at booking where available. And you get four complimentary upgrades from a core to a mint seat, which is equivalent to a business class seat. The fourth and final tier on JetBlue Airlines is called Mosaic 4, and it's achieved after earning 250 tiles, or the equivalent of spending $25,000 on JetBlue flights. Like the other three tiers, you'll get things like free check bags, alcohol on flights, same-day flight switches, and more. On top of that, Mosaic 4 gives you two additional upgrade certificates to mint seats, on top of the four that you will have already earned in Mosaic 3. On top of that, you'll get credits for four free seats on Blade Airport helicopter transfers between Manhattan and JFK or EWR, which means that you'll be able to beat the traffic and get to the airport in style. It's a unique perk that you won't get on any other airline, though, of course, it's a little niche given the fact that it's New York specific. As you can tell, while Southwest's frequent flyer perks aren't bad, JetBlue's are much more substantial and closer to the much larger US airlines in terms of quality. If frequent flyer perks are important to you, you should go for JetBlue over Southwest. Of course, regardless of the program you go for, once you've earned status, you'll have some serious points to spend. There are a range of ways you can spend points on both Southwest and JetBlue. However, perhaps the most obvious is on more flights. On JetBlue, you can spend points on JetBlue and Hawaiian Airlines flights, and redeeming points for flights in Hawaii is a pretty good deal overall. On both airlines, you can also redeem points for things like hotel stays, rental cars, and more. Though generally, redeeming for flights offers the best value. Overall, both Southwest and JetBlue are solid options, but while Southwest offers more flight options, JetBlue offers more rewards perks and a better rewards program overall. For some, Southwest still might be the way to go, but if JetBlue offers the routes you most often take, it's worth going for JetBlue over Southwest. Thanks again for watching this video, and again, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if it was helpful to you. I'll be posting more videos with more travel and airline tips in the future. See you next time.